What happens after the rapture? The rapture will certainly happen someday. Each day we are moving towards this great day of the rapture. One day, the saints, those who have been washed clean in the blood of Jesus, would be caught up in heaven with Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote that when the rapture happens, those who died in Christ will rise first, and those alive will follow them and meet them in the sky. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, King James Version. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. After the rapture, what will happen? Where would the Christians who were raptured be? What will they be doing? One thing we should expect after the rapture judgment. Judgment will happen for all of mankind at one point. But people tend to not live their life in a manner that reflects that one day they will be judged by the Lord God Almighty. I am sure, I am sure that if the thought that one day I will be judged for my actions lived at the forefront of people's minds, people would live their life differently. But that's the truth. Brothers and sisters, we will all one day be judged. Christ would judge all Christians. No one will escape judgment. But there is one thing we need to know. What Christians would be facing is the judgment seat of Christ. That is different from the judgment seat that unbelievers will face at the end of everything, called the final judgment. The unbelievers and those who rejected Christ would be facing the great white throne, and God will be the judge here. The end of this judgment is the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 11 and 12, King James Version. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. The great white throne judgment is a judgment you don't want to experience. It is one you only want to witness and not go through yourself. Those who will face this judgment are not the saints. There is a difference between the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne. The judgment seat of Christ is where Christ will judge Christians according to what they have done for the Lord. It is a place where Jesus will reward them for what they have done. The people here are not going to hell. These people have exchanged their sin with the righteousness of God that came through Jesus. The judgment seat of Christ is spoken of in the book of Corinthians. Paul wrote about this in 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through to 15, King James Version. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Christ would test every Christian's works with fire. That is what will determine the kind of reward an individual will receive. It is important to note that this judgment is not to determine whether a person will go to heaven or hell but it is to determine a believer's reward. Only believers will be involved in the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, King James Version. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Even though this judgment does not determine if we are qualified to enter heaven or not, you still need to take it seriously because of the reward given here. What will your reward be? What have you been doing for God on earth? Jesus Christ didn't call us to be churchgoers. Jesus Christ didn't call us to be a spectator in Christianity. We need to make an impact in this world. 
Jesus came and made an impact in this world before he left. The apostles made an impact before they left this world. Saul became Paul and made an impact in the world before he died. He made sure that the gospel went far enough. These people didn't give their lives to Christ just to go to church and look. Jesus did not call you to enter the church. Say amen to every prayer. Leave and repeat. You must make an impact. When your works are tested with fire, will they stand? When you are facing Jesus, what would you say you have done while in his earthly body? What have you done with the rope thrown at you in the pit to get you out? Did you throw it into the pit to get others out of the pit of sin? What have you done for the kingdom? Jesus told every one of us to go into the world and preach the gospel. Jesus never said just a few Christians alone should preach the gospel. The goal is to preach the gospel and do whatever it takes to do it. Mark 16, 15, King James Version says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach to every creature. It doesn't matter the language. It doesn't matter their beliefs. It doesn't matter their religion. The message is that you must preach the gospel. Tell people about how Jesus has saved you from destruction because of his love. Tell people that he can save you also. Tell them about the love of God for their lives. You should never be ashamed to preach the gospel. The gospel of Christ is nothing to be ashamed of. If the people of this world can do some terrible things without shame, you should never be ashamed of preaching the gospel. If they can openly commit immorality unashamed, preaching the gospel should never be a thing of shame to you. If people can walk half naked on the streets without shame, you should never be ashamed of preaching the word of God. Luke 9, 26, King James Version. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Never be ashamed of the gospel. Never be ashamed of doing something right for the Lord. Keep pressing on and you will receive the reward for your efforts. Romans 1, 16, King James Version. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Many things can deny you of your reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Lack of self-control can deprive you of everything. You need to be like Paul. You must know how to control your body and speak to it. 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27, King James Version. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You have a great reward waiting for you before Christ. Don't mess it up because of a lack of self-control. You must learn to possess your body in sanctification. 1 Thessalonians 4, 4 and 5, King James Version. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, you are different from those who do not know Christ. You are different from the people of the world. Don't behave like them. Follow holiness all the time. Don't lose your reward in heaven because of petty things that don't last in this world. The one in you is different from the person in the world. You cannot behave like them. You have something you are chasing, and that is the reward. Jesus will come and give to everyone according to their works on earth. Jesus will never be partial. He will not give you the crown you don't deserve because Jesus will not give you what you have not worked for. You must work for the Lord. Revelation 22:12, 12, King James Version says, 
And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be.